Calibrating the encoders is a fairly simple process, but there are several steps, so this video will walk you through that. I'm already connected to the computer with the USB cable, and we have the software open right here. You're either in profile three, which is a lock mode, or if you go to the follow mode tab, make sure that your follow mode is disabled. This will just make the calibration process go a lot smoother. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to the encoders tab. Now you can see the encoders are currently already calibrated. So we're going to reset those. And to do that, just put all the values in the EL field and the offset down to zero. So zero, 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 all the way across. And then we'll go ahead and write these new settings. You can also go to the top where it says encoder type and you can disable the encoders here. However, entering zero does the same thing. So with the encoders disabled, you'll want to make sure in the basic tab that you have the PID values set the way you want so that the gimbal is stable, not vibrating at all. Um, I might lower the value for the yaw axis a little bit. So we'll go 120. Write that new value. And then you'll also need to make sure that the motors are properly inverted. Now I've done this already with, with this ghost, but you can also hit the auto calibrate and it'll show you uh, which motors need to be inverted by checking this. And then the number of poles is 28 poles for each of these motors. You'll also want to make sure that your IMU, the sensor, has been fully calibrated and your gyroscope has been calibrated. So we'll just do a quick calibrate here for the gyro. Level everything out, hold it for a couple seconds, and now the gyro is calibrated. So everything's set up to run normally without the encoders, and now we can move forward to calibrating the encoders. Back to the encoders tab, you'll hit the calibrate EL field, and if your buzzer is enabled, it's going to buzz really loud for 10 seconds. And during that 10 seconds, you'll need to move each axis of the ghost several times around 20 to 30 degrees. Um, so there's several different ways you can do that. You can move it in a circular motion, kind of like this, but you'll want to do it really slow so you don't bump the axis off. Or you can also move left and right and then move the roll and the pitch. And we'll do the second option just so you know you've done each axis. So hit calibrate EL field and then move left and right three times, pitch three times, and yaw three times. And then just hold it steady. So now you'll notice that these values have changed. So for roll, pitch, and yaw, the EL field has been calibrated with these numbers. And the next step you need to do is hit calibrate offset. So you'll have five seconds to stabilize the ghost, make sure the axes are lined up, and then the motors will lock in place. So calibrate offset, hold it in place, steady, and now it's calibrated the offset. So you'll also notice down here at the bottom, the encoder motor gearing ratio is right around one for each of these. If you get a number that's drastically off from that, then you'll probably want to recalibrate that encoder. The way that you'll know that all the encoders have been properly calibrated is by this little blue ball on the right hand side. It should be centered for each axis. You can also move the axis, say the roll, just kind of push it off balance a little bit and it'll slowly come back to the level position. And that should be the same for all three axes. If one of the, if say the pitch axis was bumped during the calibration process and you're getting values that don't line up here or say this blue ball is far off to the left or right side, then you want to recalibrate that axis and you can just set the values to zero it's just for the pitch motor or whichever motor is off and hit right 
and then go through the calibration process again. That is all that's required for calibrating the encoders. So now you should be ready to operate your ghost.